as we continue in this season of Lent, remembering the events that led Jesus to the crucifixion, I thought it would be worth pausing at a fairly well-known moment in the story. It takes place in Mark chapter 14, Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Here we encounter a deeply human moment in Jesus' life. He's deeply troubled, and he brings his friends there and asks them to keep watch while he prays to the Father in his distress. His prayer is simple but remarkable. Please take this cup from me. He knows what he's been called to do. The weight of the task is almost unbearable. Yet, he continues, not what I will, but what you will. And when he returns to his friends from praying, he finds that they had fallen asleep. They were unable to remain with him during this time. If we look through this passage for a practical takeaway, we might come up with a few ideas. Jesus submitted to the Father, therefore we should submit to the Father. Or the disciples couldn't stay awake, therefore let's not make the same mistake. Or always turn to God in your distress. And as good as these lessons are, I'd like to continue with a thought that I shared several weeks back, that the Gospels are not primarily about us and what we should do. They are first and foremost about Jesus and what he has done. So let's not rush too quickly to find a practical application before pausing to consider what this story teaches us about Jesus. It might, for example, be tempting to think that Jesus didn't really suffer in Gethsemane, that he didn't really have a desire to avoid the cross, that he lived on some kind of a superhuman plane of existence, and that the very human emotions we see in this story are, to some extent at least, an illusion. This was actually something of a dominant view in the early days of Christian history, Because the idea that God could truly become human was unthinkable. If Jesus was really God, then it definitely meant he couldn't really be human, at least not in the full sense of the word. This way of thinking was called docetism. It comes from the Greek word dokain, which means to seem or to appear. The docetists believed that the humanity of Jesus was nothing but an appearance for our benefit. At their best, the Docetists were trying to honor the full reality of Christ's divinity, but they did this by essentially denying his humanity. One of the responses to the Docetists came from the early church father, Gregory Nazianzen, who argued that if Jesus didn't really take our humanity upon himself, if our humanity remains untouched by him, then we have not really been healed by him. As Gregory puts it, The unassumed is the unhealed, and so it is only by taking our humanity upon himself that Jesus has healed us. And the scene in Gethsemane is a window into the genuine humanity of Christ, like no other. Like us, he really experiences human emotions, human fears, human pain, human needs. Like us, he longs for the love and support of his friends. Like us, he prays to God when he is in distress. Unlike us, he completely and perfectly submits his will to the Father's. If Jesus isn't really human, then this scene in Gethsemane is just play-acting. So what about the disciples? Does their role in the story teach us anything about who Jesus is? I think so. Remember that Jesus asked them to watch and pray, to accompany him. But in the crucial moment... Jesus was alone. His disciples couldn't stay awake with him. I don't think the gospel writer is just trying to give us a negative example to avoid ourselves. I think we're meant to understand that human beings simply cannot do the task that Jesus is called to do. Even his closest friends could not stay awake with him. He is alone, and he alone offers the prayer that we cannot Because he, in his full humanity, submits his will to the Father, in him, humanity finally does what it could not do for itself. Turn to God. Submit to God. 
Jesus' prayer is truly offered for us, for our sakes and on our behalf. And this is what it takes to turn the human heart back to God, for God himself to take the human heart upon himself. In this way, Christ's obedience in this garden is what undoes our disobedience in the first garden. And let's not forget, the crucified one is also the risen one. The Jesus we meet in Gethsemane is the same Jesus who is present with us today. Jesus went alone in his distress so that we would not be alone in ours. When we find ourselves abandoned by our friends, left alone in our misery and pain, gripped by fear and anxiety, crushed by the power of sin and death, we find that Jesus is already there with us, saying the prayer that we cannot say for ourselves, not my will, but yours be done.